Okay. Um, I guess attendance is a good idea. So um, we have four, maybe there's five, six now. Pull requests. Um, I noted to Hank that his pull request, what was it, number 86 or something, um, 77, I think it was. And 86, uh, update the same paragraph. Um, I think we should look at uh, Ned's uh, 86 first. Um, that works. Uh, I had no problem with it, except then I got to this last part, and then I bogged down in trying to figure out how much of this was Call yet, and last yeah. I checked, it hadn't been updated since last call, whereas 85 has been. Okay, let's go to 85. Uh, there we go. Let's talk hey, about this. Then. By the way, you're not sharing your screen. Oh, I was. Sorry. I was. Oh, you know it's updated because you updated it. I see. <laughs> yes, correct. But I, I, yeah, I, I looked at the other ones, and uh, the other ones hadn't been updated when I checked. So. Does that work? That shared now? Uh, it says you're starting to share content. Nope. Don't see it yet. Share. Maybe it only works when you have a net. Well, Probably not allowed. Um, well, maybe you have to let someone else share that then. Um, do, 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 do. I doubt it, that's the problem. Just don't know what the what uh, what address it thinks it wants to use is yeah. well, if you like since 85 was mine I can share my screen for 85 yeah, and please do that somebody else can share for the other ones Please do that, and I'll see if we'll try to see if mine works again in a moment. Yeah. Okay. So may say when they can see my screen. Yes. Okay. So at least my screen share is working. Okay. So I was confused by how GitHub works because uh, in this uh, sequence of uh, commits, it shows two um, GitHub IDs. And uh, it's actually three. So if you click to the latest one and then press next, which Michael was so uh, um, uh, polite to uh, indicate to me, uh, you see the final, and that's actually the big change of this uh, uh, series of comments, which is weird, but okay. So here, just the intro. Um, if you remember, we talked about this one last week when it had a different title, right? where I tried to invent a term, which some people liked, and there was a bunch of discussion, and the end conclusion was, in general, we couldn't get any consensus on uh, there being a term. There's a bunch of things people didn't like, and so I basically rewrote it. Um, and I rewrote it, rather than defining another term, I rewrote it in a way that did not require defining a term. Okay. And so I was trying to find a way to do that that um, did not require defining a term for these three potentially different things, right? Because these could all be different things, right? If your firmware, your bias, and your UP could be different things. Um, and so instead, what I chose to do is I chose to pick a specific example, and th then I only needed to use one of those terms in that particular example. Uh, so that's why okay. you'll see a bunch of text changes, but it's probably because I was rearranging paragraphs, and it doesn't do a great job of showing text diffs. Um, yes. So if this part I removed. This, yeah, yeah. So this part I removed because this sentence, this point was actually made about uh, here, and I kept that sentence. I may have changed a word in it or something, but uh, this fixed me was about uh, layered attestation, which is this section here. And so I deleted this because it was actually done. Um, I am going to go into uh, display the rich diff to let you guys read this. Um, okay, here we go. Cool. And so he just played the um, rich diff. Yeah. 
So display the secure. Now, of course, uh, you don't get things like uh, the references. And so I try to do this. Yeah. The old diagram, just so you know, the old diagram has exactly three levels. There is a tester environments A, B, and C. Sorry, there's environments A, B, and C, right? And so there's only two layers, if you will, right? A attests to B, you know, A measures B and B measures C. Okay. And so I had to make sure that the example used exactly three levels. And so the example that I picked used um, a BIOS stored in ROM, because you know, BIOS could be ROM or an NVRAM or something. So I picked a BIOS stored in ROM so I wouldn't have to go into the issue of who measures the BIOS in ROM. Um, and then I kept the, the rest of the discussion that uh, Hank had where the next level was the bootloader and the next level after that was a kernel. And so I said, A was ROM, which in this case was a bias in ROM. Uh, B was the bootloader and C. I could have gone with four levels if I had, you know, hardware and BIOS and NVRAM, but I didn't want to have to change the diagram. And so I kept this particular three level one, uh, but I always made it clear that this is an example. And then I had a paragraph at the end saying there could be other variations at the end, but I wanted to walk through to give the, the full thing with that particular example. So uh, I guess I'm going to pause if people want to read it or you want me to read it for you or what would be the most useful to you guys? Uh, actually, this is actually hard Sorry, to read because uh, I'm seeing that some of the, these things are strike through. And so that might not be easy to read. It's, yeah, so showing more of the strike through in contrast um, to the uh, edit yeah. green might be good. Yeah. Well, the problem is everything that had this, you know, one slash two <laughs> slash three thing, all of those are removed, right? So here is gone, here is gone. Be trying to pick one example, not trying to combine all three examples, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was trying to get rid of all of these use cases here, which is what the fix me was about. How do we get rid of, um, or how do we come up with a term for all of those? And so, um, that's why I tried to rewrite them using reference to those three levels of the diagram. And so I'm going to skip over all the red here and I'm going to let you read the green here. Um, keeping in mind the number of these sentences will be similar, maybe with a word changed. Um, like you saw the UV BIOS firmware changed to a different phrase. Looking at the uh, while you're reading, looking at the uh, uh, this uh, commit basically commit batch, you also address the signing question of Thomas here. C correct. Uh, Th Th Thomas responded. Thank you, Thomas, for appearing so quickly. Um, and uh, in Hank's original text, he had this phrase here, and when I rewrote it, I uh, uh, had missed that part and put in the part about signing. And the point is. Both are valid ways to do it, and so that's the or here, where I took this phrase that Hank had and put it back in. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm just, I'm just pausing what people read unless they want to bring up something or tell I, me. I, 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 I just I just was worried that I had broken something at my end nope, when nope. you stopped talking. Uh, I, I I believe I believe that I believe that WebEx spin, spin up EC twos in order to uh, <laughs> uh, do stuff, and of course I'm not natted towards them. Uh, mm -hmm. Not yet. People tell me when you want me to scroll or feel free to stop and talk about some sentence on the screen. I opened a side by side version on my screen. So I. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and ask. Is there a difference between shielded and secure? Um, you are, uh, I don't know. And so I left the phrase as Hank had it because I don't know the answer to that. I think the word that Thomas used when Thomas, you commented, you used the word uh, sealed, um, but Hank's text, which I was trying to preserve as much of the original text as possible, unless I thought it was wrong. And so here, I didn't know enough to say it was wrong, so I kept it. 
change it, I'm happy to change it. So at the bottom is the delete of the time RR in the example one time based passport model example. Is that just a goof or did you intend to put that in that? Um, I had okay. Uh, you're you're asking about this part yeah. here. Um, uh, I intended to, although I didn't intend to in this same PR. I thought, it yeah. was sitting in there in a previous edit, and I it's because uh, unrelated to the rest here, this right here uh, is not referenced in any of the text in this section. And so right now, all the text hits all the other ones, but this one wasn't, and so it was not necessary for understanding. So that's why I deleted this one right here because it wasn't necessary in that section. But it is. I don't know what the causality is here, so maybe the the. Reference was just not captured, or the text is uh, the guiding principle. I don't know. Probably people draw drawing diagrams to people know what they're trying to express, but sometimes forget to write the text. Speaking from uh, I think it was my cut and paste error, or ah, okay. I pasted it from a different one, and then after writing the text, I didn't notice that that was still there. Anyway. Okay. That was, was there. Are defined in the table anymore? It's it because it, it's still used in a different example, right? That's why it was a cut and paste error. Got it. It's the time at which the result was relayed by the attester in the uh, passport model. So the event is still there, but the time is not used for anything, and so it's not necessary in, in the picture to go along with the text. So in that in that particular example, All right? Back up to the wall of text. Uh, coming back to Ned's question. Yes, I think there is a difference between shielded and secure. Um, shielded could be the I as a secure, of course, the methods are secure. And, and of course, shielding is a specific kind of method. So yes, there is some overlap here. But uh, the, I'm not going into shielded here directly because sometimes you have like uh, a secret that you will never, uh, never ever intended to see that is not just securely stored. It's literally shielded, so you can never really see it. You only operate on it. Um, so you have this puffs or some other things uh, that, that exists in nature. Yeah. So. Uh, so uh, 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 yeah. The evidence, and so it sounds like the word shielded in that sense would not apply to claims, which actually go in the evidence. Yeah, this can never go into evidence. Uh, it can only operate on and be used for creating evidence and such, but. Uh, Shielded means uh, maybe we should elaborate on this, but I didn't want to go into the depths of it. Um, so can it, we? It's basically could we use unaccessible. Could, could we instead use untemperable because that's how I sort of intended no, this. Untemperable is something else. Untemperable is visible, but untemperable. This is never unchangeable. It's shielded. It is. It is no. It is not even visible. It's only operatable on. That doesn't no, apply to claims. That's why I said yes, I don't exactly. think shielded goes. I think we remove shielded from the sentence, and then I think you were saying the suggestion was instead of just saying in a secure manner, can you say in an untamperable manner, which is yeah. more yeah. precise than a secure? And I mean something third here, not only secure but untamperable, but also never obtainable. Well, but then how can you use it as a claim? Right. Exactly. You cannot use it as a claim. This sentence is about things that are claims. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Um, this is a suggestion. Oh yeah, you you do you and disentangle the sentence with the environment A and A stuff. So um, yes, but it's well, still even the, even the old text. It was in the context of claims, and so I think the comment would have okay. applied in the old text too. Props. So maybe I was maybe not uh, conveying the right meaning here. So signing could be used. By uh, could, could you could, for signing you could use a shielded secret that you never ever be able to see. You can only pass the right thing here. And sign. How about then, uh, the claims? Let me check that. Ah, okay, done. I have it on my screen. Um, so, so the intent of the, what I tried to convey here was that the signing operation might be using secrets that you will never be able to or that are never intended to be uh, visible. That's, that's a very strong uh, prerequisite, and it's an example of how you can do things. You can also store them securely, like an Android key store, but you have to open that, and then the moment it's opened, it's, it's still more attackable. A shielded secret, uh, by default, is intended to never be that attackable. All right, so this is saying, how do you make sure that the next environment here, B, can't tamper with uh, claims that were measured by A? Okay. 
And so it says there's two ways to do that. Okay. You can either have A sign them, and so it's signed by a key or a secret uh, okay. that it doesn't have. And so you could tamper with it, but it would invalidate the signature and you'd fail to attest, right? So that's the first part. Or you can take the claims and put them somewhere where B just can't possibly tamper with them, right? It's, it's not, it's stored someplace, then you just put it in the evidence directly out of there, so B never has a chance to touch it, right? Those are the two cases here in SOAR, right? And, and when you the shooting. When you say signing here, you're not talking about signing as an attestation, you're just talking about it as an implementation technique for protecting those things. Um, I was talking about it in the signature that could appear in the uh, uh, evidence itself, but it could be either. But if you're asking which one I was thinking when I put the text in there, it was actually the, 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 the case where it's actually a signature where that signature appears in the evidence. Okay. That, that, that's actually how we implement DICE. I don't know if there's other DICE implementations, but that's how we actually implement DICE. Yeah, I, I see how DICE works this way, but uh, other um, claims might not be uh, uh, shielded in that way to reuse that term again. C correct. That's why this phrase is trying to encompass, yeah, there's many ways to do it, right? Um, and some people are familiar with the second technique. Some people are familiar with the first technique. And the point is, it's layered attestation to get the concept. It doesn't matter which one you're doing. It's the same concept, right? It's A measures B, B measures C, yeah. <clears throat> works for me. Yeah, I think so. Right. Um, apparently, I can't commit the suggestion. I don't know why, but uh, maybe I have to finish the review first. I think Michael ran into that last time. So. Uh, all right. Um, I'm going to go back to that wall of text. I'm going to go back to the wall of text and then scroll down past there. All right. So before I commit that, I'll let people finish reading that wall of text or pick on it. Weird how bad it is at creating this for this. Okay. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I guess in Git, line breaks are significant and uh, it can't do with too many moves, right? Because it, it can only show pluses and minuses. It can't show, you know, uh -huh. if you reorder two paragraphs, one of them will always show as new. Uh, please check my wording here because I'm using signed here and I want to make sure there's not some other variation where this text is only correct for a particular example. Um, I could say it's an example if that's the case, but if there's a better wording, let me know on the, the measured and signed by here. There's a better wording. I mean, I think that this is correct because it's how I am familiar with doing dice, but if there's another way that I need to change the text, happy to. You removed a root of trust reference in the last paragraph, which is uh, idiomatic. So I, uh, I appreciate the uh, effort. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I removed it because I was taught. I picked an example where uh, it was in ROM, and uh, the previous text was talking about how you need a hardware root of trust. And if you have ROM, then you can argue that the, the ROM is the hardware root of trust. But I could, I, I omitted that phrase. You are correct. I don't know whether that's good or bad. Yeah, we don't want to use it in any case. So I'm I'm not really married yeah. to that. So okay. uh, let's see how this. We have to have the do a polish this at the end of the case. So we can leave it out now because our premise is to remove them where possible. Yep. Yep. Right. And uh, the this reference at the end here is the diagram again. I think I'm going to scroll here if people want to stop reading for a second. Um, you can see the diagram is referenced here. Okay. And prior to my text, the old text never actually referenced the diagram number. So it would never say, uh, you know, figure six or whatever the number was. Um, and so I referenced it twice, right? One is right above it, you know, figure six or whatever depicts an example. And then at the very end, that's the same reference um, when I say this could be extended uh, to other variations. All right.
<clears throat> so the only place that talks about the environment where the code is running or loaded and running is the phrase that says it's the claims are signed or they're stored. I don't think that's the same as any kind of description on where the code is actually running. That's an observation. Is there? The observation is there's, <clears throat> it's just maybe more gen gen general for any of these diagrams, but there's the observation that, or an, an expectation that the environments in which <clears throat> uh, the target environment is, that both the, the testing and the target environments are actually running is, has uh, meaningful isolation properties. Uh, the old it. text didn't say anything about that, and I don't know if there's something we need to say about it, so it didn't occur to me to put anything in when it wasn't in there in the text before. But. Yeah, it's just, it's an assumption that maybe it's obvious uh, without explicitly stating it, I don't know. Just, yeah. okay. Have people finished reading the wall of text yet? Is there anybody that's still reading the wall of text on the screen? Can I scroll? I'm done. Okay. I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to commit this suggestion then. Okay. Okay. So that's the intro. That, that's why I did to address this. Uh, fix, well, the two fix me's, right? There was one fix me that was technically already done before. But this was the main fix me here. We're looking for a better term then, and that's the one I tried to address here. And so I claim that both of these are done. Um, this one, if you read the wall of text, you probably spotted it where it talked about in one of the, maybe the second paragraph. Uh, um, here, this, this sentence right here is the one that I kept that did that fix me. At this stage, the boot cycle of the device. The claims collected typically cannot be composed into evidence, right? That tech, that that sentence was already there before, and that was the one that actually had done that particular fix me before, right? Requirement measurements at early stage are not evidence yet. The text does not cover that yet. That was that sentence that actually did that. So, okay, so that's it. Any other comments, or should we uh, merge this one? Go on to the next one. What do you guys think? I think it's ready to merge. Merge it. Agree. All right, I'm going to go ahead and merge this one, and then I, after I merge it, I will stop sharing. If somebody else wants to take over or sharing for the next one, okay. And I'm deleting my branch. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, Michael, do you want to try again now? Did you figure it out? Yeah, let's try. Sure. I doubt it will work, but let's try. <laughs> Anything? Nope. Not yet. It still shows starting to share content, which makes it sound like, hey, yeah, we're trying to negotiate with Stone or something, and it's not completing. Yeah, I get, I get, I get, I actually get, yeah, complaints from the browser about stunned things. Actually, I'm not getting them right now. Just Something else is going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just if you'll just bear with me for one second. Uh, what 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 ticket are we going to talk about? Let's let's talk about that question as I just try and see what happens here. I'm curious what UDP packets are streaming out of my system. <laughs> this is hard. I can't just dump everything. It's just it's too much, right? Um, yeah, there's nothing leaving of import. All right. Well, anyway, okay. So um, we had um, that was one pull request. The one that I'm really I let's go to Ned's pull request eighty six. Can you pull that one up, Dave? Um, I can. Do you want me to share again? Yeah, please. All right, hold on. Okay, sharing. Are there? Yep. Oh. Right, because uh, when I look from the bottom up, the last things that I see are comments by people, and you know, seven days ago, which was our meeting last week. 
and uh, there's been no commits for it since before the last meeting. So I don't know if there's stuff to talk about on this one or not yet. Okay. Um, so as my recollection, we talked a lot about this and kind of ran out of time. Okay. So, um, um, I, I don't, I don't know that, I mean, you, you had, you had comments. We had some discussion about service and service provider. I think that was the major one as I went through a kind of review of, of what I thought. Um, and so Lawrence had a bunch of comments that I guess we need to walk through or Lawrence needs to provide, suggest some changes or argue some changes there with were, Ned. There were two commits. Maybe it was during the meeting last time. I don't know. This is like seven days ago. You see those two ones. And then Lawrence did a review after that and generated a whole bunch of comments down here yeah that's right so so those were i think we're done lawrence's comments were after the meeting yeah um and so i don't think ned you haven't responded but let's let's see if we can deal something with this because i think there was a fair bit of content here i'm gonna go to the uh files change view so you can see the comments in line so i guess you want to walk through lawrence's comments here lawrence are you on yeah, I'm here. Um, um, so who wants to drive the conversation? Lawrence, Michael, do you want me to do it? I'm happy for one of you two to. But... Uh, it's probably easier for you to point at your screen and tell us what we're talking about um, for the moment. Um, I, 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 I went through them about a... a 40 minutes ago or something like this. And uh, I guess my comments about most of the comments, I was like, uh, I don't, I can't really see, a, I can't really see one way or the other that it makes sense. Um, I mean, I don't care, right? Um, you know, like, so for instance, you're, uh, where am I? I'm in the comments near the top i guess where you had some comment about you changed the entity back to it because i think it was clear right. now hold on um uh, you're talking about somewhere near the top okay here's the top uh, am i looking at the right thing 86 files change Line let number. me hit files change instead of yeah let me hit files change instead of i was looking at diffs it was like, uh, it was on maybe, maybe we okay um yeah so, so maybe Maybe I, we, maybe we, maybe I'm looking at the wrong detail level of detail here. Sorry. Um, the point is, I couldn't, I couldn't reading it. I was like, you know what? I can't really feel any different one way or the other. Uh, so I don't have any objection to the new taxes at this point. I didn't really feel any, any, any attachment to it. Yeah, it rolls. Um, I, yeah, sure. I feel like we beat it to death at this point and I don't have any further opinion. I'm trying to spot the differences here. This is a case where, you know, there's some line breaks added, which is, you know, thank you for breaking long lines into uh, multiple lines. Like this first one here, it shows up as a diff. I can't tell if there's a word change or not. I'd, I don't think it's a change. I think it's just a line break. No, there are some words changed. I always like to put those as separate commits. Yeah. Um, even push the line, the white space change into the master and then there. But when we do files changed, we see that merge together. Well, so, we're going to see it either way, right? Because like here, there's two sentences in the old line, not line 94. And the wording change was done to the second sentence. The first sentence is unchanged. Purposes to numbers and numbers. Yeah. So as I said, I don't feel, I, I, I'm at the like, looks prettier to me go ahead i can't so, see any uh, i don't see any objection to it anything here at this point um uh, uh, that lawrence has some I, suggestions i'm gonna have to reread it again which i can't do easily while driving the screen so lawrence do you want to comment on some of what you commented on yeah that's fine i mean uh, just some I thought... of that um So, um, let's see here. Mm 
My, uh, my first comment was on evidence, the definition of evidence. The current definition of evidence just says it's a set of information. I'll find it just a second here. Where's the definition of evidence? I'd really like to say, give me a line number. Say uh, 130. 138. 138. Okay, found it. Go ahead. Uh, scroll down so you can see a little bit more so you can see my uh, comment. Uh, up a bit. I'm trying to get. You need to go. Uh, it's further up. His comment is further up. You said line 138, right? Which no, is right. 130. Yeah, that's, you're, you're, the you got it. Goes from here down to the end of this second comment. You got it. Yep. Um, so, uh, I mean, to me, trying to be a lot more specific about these terms and detailed um, and show how they relate because there's a lot of information and, and, and helpful in, in understanding how they relate to each other. Well, I think that this change is actually incorrect. The more that I think about it. The information itself is not necessarily about the trustworthiness status. It's information about it, but whether it's actually something that is, when you say it's a search, the trustworthiness status, um, I, I, Dave, I'm sorry. I, let, let me let me talk here a little bit. Um, I, I'm proposing rewriting the whole thing. So, um, if you read the comment, and and there's some suggest I su suggest some text there. So get rid of the term trustworthy. Um, so refer to the term claim. Um, say how it relates to, uh, you know, where it comes from and where it goes. So, um, so I, I'm su I, suggesting I, go ahead. Is, a, is a set of claims, because we need to mention the word claim. That's really important in defining evidence, because evidence is made up of claims. So a definition of evidence without the term claim is, is kind of a, a very poor definition. Um, I feel free to keep so going. I'm going to have some comments once you're done. So. Okay, so um, you can see my proposed wording there is just it's a set of claims, not information of claims that characterize a target. So that's what so you know that it, that evidence is about a target. And then, it, and then the, the evidence is conveyed from the attester to the verifier. Um, so you kind of know what the processing is of it, or, you know, where it starts and where it goes and then what happens to it when it gets to the verifier. That was my proposed. Uh, <clears throat> so, I'm okay with with changing information to claims. I think this uh, proposed change is actually trying to add semantics to the 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 use of the word information because it isn't clear what information, what type of you know what the information is. But as Dave suggests, trying to ascribe trustworthiness status uh, to to claims is uh, implies a you know some that, that there's some appraisal that's being done by the attester by the testing environment, which is you know not technically correct. <clears throat> right, but Lawrence is in agreement on that part, right? Yeah, absolutely. Lawrence, yeah. I, I, so I think uh, Lawrence and I and you all agree that uh, the text here that adds trustworthiness status is uh more trouble than it's uh worth and it's better to avoid that i i think we but i, I, mean, I think I, agree. I think by changing the word information to claims you accomplish the same goal as what i was after yeah there so, is a, so there, sorry there is I a agree gap with this one. I would like to sorry again let me interject um okay. there is a gap if you, if you, if you remove trustworthiness that's fine you have to insert something else otherwise a claim set is not different from evidence and there's a difference. And what what quality do we add to evidence that distinguishes it from a claims set? It's very important, I think. And that is tell missing why, if, you, if you just remove it. Can't tell us why it's important? You say it's important. Um, you think it's elaborate? Yeah, it is important because we can uh, uh, eliminate the term evidence if it's not different. Then it's all claim sets. We, mm, we, 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 we remove no. the term evidence. Yeah, no, exactly, no. But so there's a difference. 
and that is important. The, the difference is who the endpoints are. I would say that any any claim set that goes between an attester and a verifier is called evidence. Any claim set that goes between a verifier and a relying party is called attestation result. Yes, and that is, I think, very wrong. Sorry, I, uh, this is just Hank. This is not no heads on. This is just Hank uh, 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 emitting the opinion that this is very wrong. Uh, evidence has a certain so, so specific quality of it. Uh, think of it like a CIS. So if you do not uh, collect it correctly, uh, bag it correctly and tag it correctly, uh, the, the, the forensic will never be able to use it. It will be uh, not viable in court. That is evidence. So if you are not using an testing environment that, can, that somehow has trust invested into it, and is, is, is capable and, and responsible and trusted to do this job, uh, it will not be evidence. It will just be a, uh, a simple claim set with no level of insurance. The uh, elevating part here is the attesting environment is doing it. That is the one that's creating the evidence on the attester side and therefore enhances the level of assurance. If we drop that, remote attestation procedures in principle make no sense. So you, so you don't have to put all that paragraph in the, the definition of evidence. You can describe it elsewhere. Yes, that is correct. But we have to have a linking word that is maybe not trustworthiness. I was using trustworthiness for that exact context. And we could so, elaborate on that somewhere well, else. So, we have so to you can take that argument. Else. You can take that argument to say you should never put uh, uh, a, a uh, GPS in there if you can't personally vouch for the GPS value. No, 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 this is, this is the claim value again. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I'm not talking about claim but value. I, so that's, why, claim, that's why I agree that trying to put it into the definition is not the right place to do it, um, but I, I'm listening. No, 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 no. I think it's very fundamental to highlight that a claim set is different from a type of evidence. And, and, and now, no, not dancing around the term, typically you sign that stuff with some very good protected secret or a secret that is well known to be somewhere and it's okay, you know, not stolen and, and not compromised and stuff. So that's the reality, yeah. So we're dancing around all these terms, not talking about root of trust, not talking about shielding of secrets, not everything, but there has to remain a simple fundamental exclamation that this is different from just a set of claims. Otherwise, we would use GCCS all the time. But we're let not. Me ask you, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If regardless of whether we're talking about the old wording or the new wording, where it says a set of information or a set of claims, would your uh, concern be addressed or not addressed if it said a set of signed information or a set of signed claims? Is that sufficient? No, it's too specific, actually. Because you said that you yeah, you could put it in a very secure channel, omit the signature, which is an ongoing discussion, and therefore it's not signed and still evidence. He's so saying it's a set of claims asserted by an attesting environment. Yes. Uh, an attesting environment has also Wrong place, wrong place actually, of document to do it. The, here we have to define it without defining the details of the environment. That's in a later section. If you omit a certain degree of, I don't know, you can believe this, I'm not calling it trustworthiness, you can believe this due to some measures, I don't know. If you omit this from the term evidence, you're breaking the whole thing. And maybe I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out to Paul here, yeah. or yeah. some other yeah. people on this call. Um, he's not on the call, right? No, he's not. Um, but in any case, but uh, that so is here, a vital thing. It's really a style, it's, really a, style, uh, it's, it's a question of style. Where this is er the section is early in the document. You're trying to give the readers some, you know, introduction, introductory level uh, understanding of what all this stuff is, and the uh, but you don't want to overwhelm them with you know uh, with uh, uh, court proceedings or legal briefs or whatever. Yeah. So it's it's intentionally vague because we're going to add. We're going to add, you know, the details later. I agree with that, Ned. If, if we add the definition, yeah, and if we add the, if this text can be interpreted, signed is too, too specific. If we do not find text that distinguishes claim sets from evidence, we strike evidence from the terminology, period. There is no way that I will no, but to convince I, that I you can. I think we're in agreement. 
we're in agreement with i think you're in the rough egg <laughs> i think that i think that no. i think i think that I think that there's general agreement that you have to have a crisp understanding of and definition of evidence. Uh, but I think that right now is in the document is the wrong place to put it. Yes. This is the early on stuff. And if I cannot distinguish a difference between evidence and claim set without using the term sign, which is too specific, it's not useful. And I would remove the complete definition because it is useless. It does not add anything if you're not adding anything. And it cannot be signed. Signed is too specific. Signed is wrong. And I think Thomas would agree with this, that signed is a too strong of a statement here because it sometimes is not signed. It's simply said, not, not uh, correct. I, I think even in the text that what was it that wrote about the uh, implicit the, the channel stuff? I forget. Even in that stuff, it may still be signed, but it's signed by the channel, by the channel encapsulation, not by the uh, not by and the. Never write something. out signed by a channel. This will be will be eaten up by ISG. That is like like this is. Super I'm not proposing to write it out. I'm saying uh, that I it's took, added for I, I took, I, So I took I took an assignment to go find wording for that idea, but it's later in the document. Yeah. So can I, we, can I, we, I don't understand how this, this all came up from this one change here. That's what I, 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 I guess it was because we had a conversation yeah, about, part. about attestation results, not being evidence, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, the, 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 the public quest uh, refines the, a lot of the definition. So I went after what I thought should be refined for the definition. And, and, and my, I mean, my proposal is actually not either of the text that's showing there, but the text in the comment later below, which is a somewhat of a rewrite. Right. Um, so I, I've taken your, I've took the text and I put it in a suggestion. I'm surprised that didn't refresh on your screen already, but maybe you have to explicitly reload. Um, I can't, but on Lawrence's, I have no preference on this one, meaning I am fine with your proposal here. I agree with this one, certainly. Um, and this one, I disagree with. Um, that's all I wanted to say before. But if you want me to refresh, I can refresh here. Um, what do you so, disagree with, Dave? Defining a new term. I hate defining new terms. And I think that, that, that one, I think, actually confuses me more than not having the term. Slide up yeah. a bit, yeah. So uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find the right spot here. We don't introduce the terminology around uh, testing environment and target environment until later in the document. So. This is what you want me to show, Michael? Yeah, so I just put put the text that, that okay. Lawrence suggested into an actual okay. suggestion. Um, okay. So gotcha. so what the question I had about that thing was whether the word attestation before evidence was meaningful. Oh, huh. uh, no, it should not be. I mean, you're, you're right. I, That's right. I should be removed, yeah. Okay. So I think uh, I can I edit that, that same pairing of words somewhere else, maybe in a text that I rewrote and I removed it. You just, just read that, Dave. You're right. Attestation should be not capitalized here. Uh, that is an artifact. I've just uh, updated the suggestion yeah, to remove okay. that word. That's okay. That. So uh, sorry that I'm a hardliner on the evidence stuff, but literally uh, we cannot use the term signed or trustworthy. Find some it's other not, term. And I'm but it's not in this. It's not in this line, so let's not worry about it there. Um, no, not in this line, but I'd want to do the... Uh, uh, but let's focus on this line, because we've got to make small steps forward here, right? So um, are, do we have objections to this ch suggested change that resolves this particular point here? Absolutely. Is that I said, I object to defining this term right here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Shoot. So you object to the attestation target be there. Okay. Just wanted yeah. to be clear. Is, yeah. And that isn't even the term that we use later in the document. Correct. That's what what is the term we use? Target environment. Target environment. Well, no, I don't know what you mean by this. I don't even know what the intent was because, you know, we said there can be multiple target environments, right? Just like in the whole point of layered attestation, the evidence is the collection of all of them. That's why there's the parentheses S on here, presumably. But, uh, I don't think in the text here, in the definitions, we should define evidence in a way that has to use terms about the internal implementation, about you know the target environment and the, test, and the testing environment or whatever it is in the much later section. I want a definition here that is more, ab that is more abstract with respect to how things are implemented internally. 
Right. It's you need something like <clears throat> it characterizes the behavior or something. Right. It's the old text, which I did not. Uh, okay. Anyway, the old text was uh, that, that somehow is about the trustworthiness status of an attester, which is better. I don't like that either, but I like it better than uh, this one. So. But evidence is not about an attester. It's yeah. You're you're. The attester is the entire box of stuff that okay. includes the right. testing environment, the target environment, and so on in the later sections. Right. The tester includes the both. role is seen from the outside. <clears throat> the tester is the attesting environment plus the attesting target. Uh, as used in the diagrams later, yes. It's the entire you know the device artist. or entity or whatever term that you want to use when you're talking about it. Yeah. Well, the question was, I think to rephrase it, is the uh, testing environment and the target environment part of the attester yes yes <clears throat> are the claims re re uh, about the attester <clears throat> the testing environment could be a question to ask <clears throat> and i think we get a divided answer because in in some cases the attesting environments claims are asserted by endorser uh, but uh, some some argue that they could be self asserted in which case okay maybe yeah. There's things that come from the attester, which is the evidence, and there are things that come from an endorser, which is the endorsement. Yeah. And so here, the, the you know a set of claims created by the attester, all good so far. If you ended it with a period there, I would be happy. Hank would be unhappy, but I would be happy. <laughs> Again, there has to be a distinct discrimination the, between claim sets and evidence. That's all the I say. Second sentence here. Down. The second sentence is perfectly fine because that's basically just a rephrasing of this with no change in meaning. I have no problems with it. It's only yeah. this phrase right here is the problematic so, phrase where. So, what do we? What I don't see, still don't know what you would prefer. Um, My preference would be to make Hank unhappy, but I don't know how to make. <laughs> but what? But what? What? <laughs> That's okay. It's can you edit the suggestion so we can find out how Hank is how unhappy cool, Hank. he is? I'm not trying to make you unhappy. I'm saying my preference is the one that would make you unhappy. Sorry. Can we can we the rest <laughs> of us understand that that suggestion better? Can you edit that suggestion to put your preferred wording in? Well, Maybe Hank will to... not be as unhappy as 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 you think. Well, no, no, I'm no, sorry. unhappy. Yeah, I, I, I'm okay with removing that. I'm also against the last one. So you just put a period there. Okay. A yeah, a conceptual message is, is yes, of course, we define, we, we give it a more, more annotation by where is it created and who is the ultimate consumer. But that is not uh, uh, defining how the message looks like, which is my point. So I think, yes, why the second sentence is true ish without relaying parties because we relay stuff so it's not true -ish in the literal sense you do not send it to the verifier all the time you send it to the relying party sometimes but i can look beyond that but still it does not get the point of that the actual payload is different to standard claim sets and that's the point and there's different semantics to it and that is my my, my, my that, that i'm also missing hank we understand your point and we, we agree with it we just want to put the text that says what that is somewhere else i understand and if it's not in the terminology it's a malformed terminology and therefore it should be scrubbed because it's an underdefined term that is uh, semantics 101 no i i, I... I don't agree. Um, the terminology needs to introduce the terms and the terminology can say, you know, a set of claims as described in section four. <laughs> right. Okay. That Where is it could have could have 12, around. you know, uh, uh, pa 12 pages of explanation. Okay. If we were, um, if we were writing a dictionary, then Hank would be correct, but we're not writing. Uh, a dictionary. And we're not writing a dictionary. Yes, exactly. So, if I mean, this, this is... okay. If, if I'm writing a glossary and have a reference to the defining section, this whole discussion that's fine it, the point is the point is to, to is to say here's some terms and we're using them specially so when you see them don't go get your dictionary go look up go use our definition so that people know what's going on and that's why we also chose to capitalize them then i was widely missing the point of this discussion and i'm sorry for stealing 50 minutes of your time if that is your point that we can just put a reference to the defining so, section it's weird. if if that I don't know where that goes, but if that's necessary, then let's write argue about that section, not about the definition where it goes here. Um, I, what what I think is that we have 
this okay. this pull uh, request has reached the point of diminishing returns and um, i have a question I, I don't know whether this is a gonna make things be really easy to resolve or if it's gonna make things harder so feel free to say let's not go there um you can see the original text here did not talk about claim sets. It sounds like his, uh, that Hank, your primary objective was making, making sure that people weren't confusing a regular claim set with a, uh, the type of claim set that becomes evidence for whatever the type is, you know, trustworthiness status or whatever. Um, the original one did not use the word claims. Um, and so if it's a set of information about, did you have the same objection to the original stuff? Because it doesn't use the word claim set. Now, you can see Lawrence, and I said, I don't have a strong preference either way about information versus claims here. I can go either way. I just don't know whether it would make you feel any better if this said a set of evidence created, sorry, a set of information created by an attester that's conveyed and so on. Would that make you less unhappy here if the word claim wasn't used in the definition? Or would you still be just as unhappy? So I think that claims is good because okay. we are right. using claims in a different right. manner already here. Right. It's very defined. Right. And we right. think just it's a just wanted to see if it was easier to make the thing go away by not using the word claims there and different claims until later, but it sounds like it doesn't help. So back to you, Michael. Okay. What would you like to do, Michael? You were trying to say something. You were talking about diminishing returns. Are you there, Michael? Did you lose Michael? Certainly not as strong as Hank has, but okay. um, um, so, uh, can can we walk through the rest of this, these things quickly in the next five minutes and see if what other big, well, actually, what things we can agree on and what things, if we can't agree on them, let's just move on to the next uh, uh, thing. They're mostly Lawrence's comments at this point. Um, okay, so... You're looking at the definition of relying party there. Um, so I don't think a relying party is typically an application. Um, I think of it as, you know, a legal entity or a, a service like an enterprise, a network or a bank. What do you mean by that? Because evidence has to be parsed by a computer and a bank is not a computer. We're talking about the definition of a relying party. Yes. And in this context, it's an app. I mean, I agree that it is an application. I mean, the typical application I'm trying in the context of how relying party is used in this document. How is it not an application? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I can understand there may be other uses of relying party that might refer to a bank, but as we're using it here in 49.9, I think it is an application. I mean, I'm going for the, I mean, this is a high level architecture di uh, discussion and trying to characterize the consumer of the whole, the whole uh, um, attestation operation. So it's not about the software that's used, like, you know, 10 different, uh, Ten different relying parties could use the same application software, but they might be, but they're different relying parties. And then the one thing that I will agree with you on is that uh, it's, the discussion of whether it's an application is something that we should not need to get into. Now, maybe somebody will think it's necessary, but I don't think it's necessary. And so, if all you're trying to say is it's possible to write this without using the word application, and here's your how about this, then uh, I'm willing to go along with that. Um, I don't think it, it, that the green text here was incorrect in any way, but if you're saying, well, that just begs questions that we'd better not get into, I'm fine to go along with that. And you can go on and talk about your, how about this? This wasn't my text in the green. So. <clears throat> well, I'm, yeah. trying, I'm trying to help, the, help the, the parentheses is to provide some intuition about what this sentence, you know, how does this relate to the, to the outside world? Just like you know, a, a verifier is typically an application too, right? For some definition of application. Yeah. Right? So I think there. the point here is that it's not a human; it's a piece of software that is going no, to make it's a legal human. entity. It's uh, like an operator is a human. That's what I'm saying. Is uh, I agree that it's not a human. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's not a human because a human doesn't doesn't do this. Doesn't look at the signature. We don't calculate 
the the validate the signature ourselves. We look at it. We have an application do that, and uh, so the the, uh, the application speaks to me. I don't do the work for it. I mean, I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to go for a, a lot more high level sense making. Yeah. Here than just what software connects to the this software connects to that software connects to that software. I'm trying to really describe the. Uh, from a much more broad perspective. So you're saying a relying party is an organization or or legal entity like an enterprise, et cetera, that does something. And so, but I but I think that that most of the other people are saying, but it's a specific thing that validates the attestation results and and appraises it using the appraisal policy. Well, it makes the end decision about. I mean, it, it's it's. I think it's really important because the relying party is the end consumer of the attestation. It decides whether the 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 guy is going to be let on the network or the, the transaction is going to be approved, and uh, that that seems just really important in trying to understand what attestation is all about. The, the intent of using the term application is to provide some intuition that it's it's. Uh, it could be anything that that is performed in information processing. In other words, uh, if you're familiar with terminology used in like you know information processing, data processing, database management, they talk about an application being a, 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 as an abstract term for it could be anything. Maybe that doesn't translate. I don't know, but it's it's it it doesn't. I mean, I, I don't. It's, I'm, it's, I'm not really so so concerned about the the term application. I'm just trying to go for a, a much broader, larger view of what a relying party is. So, someone coming at, at coming at this, trying to make sense of what attestation is all about, has a has has some. You, you can add to the list, I suppose. I mean, it's just the it's, it's the either either you you get specific about. You, uh, the question is how much intuition does the reader need, right? And so maybe they don't need any intuition. You just leave it very vague and they can infer themselves what it means, or we add some, we add some clarity to it. So, so I, I propose some text there, a um, couple, couple of sentences um, that, that trying to say what I'm, I'm saying. These, this is all exemplary, right? It's not trying to limit it to that. Yeah, right now, uh, Lawrence's definition is anything that consumes the attestation result is called a relying party, regardless of what you use it for. I think that's the gist yeah. of what Lawrence's comment is. Even if you don't use it for an authorization decision, if you purely use it for logging, if all you do is you take the information yeah. and you yeah. store it, he says that's still a relying party. Yeah. I'm not sure I agree with that definition. I'm not sure I disagree with it either. I'm still thinking about it. Um, but I think the real, the real point, I mean, I think one of the key points here is the whole attestation process, everything we're talking about is in service of the relying party. They're the they're the ones that. Right, so, so originally, yeah. so if we removed the parenthetical, Thus, the remaining text says what you just said in one sentence. Except for the application word here appears again down here. Yeah, which... but you don't say half of that. It's like. Sorry. In... Yeah. But the point, the point is work... to say the, the point of using the word application below is to say that there is some there's some um, uh, actions that are not defined here. Uh, in other words, the the okay. The here, here, so to me, here's what you're saying. It has no actual value. It has to be integrated with something else. And if we can't use the word application, then come up with some other word. But we use the word application all the time in computing, and everybody seems to know what it means. So, so take take it. If you want application, just put it in parentheses and somewhere, somewhere in there, in, in my text, and that's fine. I don't really care about. Uh, that that so much. I'm just trying to find the larger definition. So here's an analogy. I mean, you can write a definition of a plane is an object that flies. Well, okay. Um, but what I'm trying to say is, 
Uh, a plane is an object that flies, that carries people from a point A to point B, um, because that's where they want to go, um, versus like a plane is an object that just, you know, is for entertainment with a paper plane or, you know, something like that. It's, I'm trying to describe yeah, the but, point of all of this. But we're in the, we're I, still, remember, have, at the beginning of the document, we're questions. trying to introduce the reader to you know, general concepts, and we're not trying to have a dictionary definition, right? It's the same conversation as we had before. I have two questions. One is, it's uh, after the hour right now, how long do we want to go? And the other one is, uh, I still don't understand what was wrong with the red text that we're trying to fix that I'd like to understand, but I'm happy with understanding that outside the context of this meeting, if people want to uh, wrap up. Uh, the problem I had with the previous text is it it uses it's it's providing intuition around the idea of uh, providing op authorization, which is too narrow. So basically, that that intuition moved to the beginning into the parentheses and used the more general term application as opposed to the specific application of authorization. Okay, so Ned, if I understand your answer that uh, changing the text as I will read it now would have accomplished the same purpose, is at least out of the part that we've answered. An entity that depends on the validity of information about an attester, uh, period. Compare relying party. That, yeah, would had, yeah. that would have had the same, uh, uh, done the same fixes because you were worried about, you wanted to replace another entity to be more specific. Yeah. And you're yeah. saying the part that was problematic for you was this part right here. Yeah, if you want to just delete that, that's fine with me. So I'm just going to capture that as another proposal down to here for, for because otherwise I'm going to forget it by the time we get to it next. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so if we don't say that. The relying party is the end consumer, and you know, the, of all of the this in the definition it, that it, then it needs to be somewhere else. Why not uh, call it also claims here? We are falling back to uh, uh, information, like, yeah. Uh, because I didn't think about it, I just copied that. Yeah, okay. Uh, was this, uh, information, was information, this, uh, information, yeah. So yeah, that yeah, would be okay with you. Tomato, not, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just trying to wrap up because it's five minutes after now, so. Yeah, that's okay. And yet I, I don't want us to argue about things if we can find, if we don't know what the problem is we're trying to solve. So thank you, Ned, for clarifying what problem you were trying to solve. I don't want us to do uh, useless bike shedding. I want us to do useful bike shedding. Uh, okay. It's for useful. That's good. Okay. Yeah. You're so you're going to ride the bike, right? right? Yeah. You know, you may yeah. actually care, right? Uh, I may not want my bike. I don't want my bike to be plaid or something. So. And also not bumpy, and I want to be comfortable. So I'm, I'm with you all okay. the time. So okay. please don't take this uh, the wrong way always. All right. So, uh, do we want to try to continue this next time, or what do we want to do now? Because yeah, it's already over time. So, I have to drop sadly. Sorry, it was a good discussion, though. Okay. So to, and, and uh, <laughs> right. I have put in here the things that. Uh, sorry, uh, up here, the thing, I, you can see I said point, discussion point or whatever. Um, I think Hank, your point is not. Oh, right. If you'd like to enter that, enter your comment yourself. Feel free. Um, but I was trying to enter comments so what I was hearing, yeah, discussion during me. This is what I was hearing from more than one person. If it's just one person, go ahead and enter your comment yourself. Or if I missed it or whatever, go ahead. So, yeah, no problem at all. Uh, so I know that we are blocking with one person here. So I'm this time the blocker. So, uh, uh, but uh, I think we can work around that with references or other things to edit to it. That's fine. Okay. So I am going to stop sharing my screen because I would like us to wrap up soon. So. Yeah. Okay. Next time. And if I remove the text, nobody can point at it. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, nice. <laughs> they can still read it off of their own screen, but then it's not me that's doing it, so. Okay, so uh, we are gonna come back to this next time. Um, and 
Um, uh, I, I, th this is probably the third hour we've spent on this pull request. Um, so as Dave said, let's not bike shed too badly on this, but, um, it seems like there is some useful work that we're doing. Um, but I, I would like to maybe start, uh, please, if you could hank open two more about freshness and maybe those are easier to close. Time considerations, 86 and 87. I haven't looked at them yet because they're only an hour old. Yeah, I haven't gone through them either. I think I opened one in, oh, like in the five minutes before the meeting. And so I, maybe we start with those next time because I don't know how long this one yeah, is. Let's start with those. Play, and so. 82 as well, I, which I opened based upon another uh, number 60. And I thought we're pretty much done. Ned said plus one. And which one? Dave, 82. Uh, last I checked, it had unaddressed comments. Yeah, it's unaddressed comments, so I'll I'll go through them, but I think that uh, they're minor, and so if, if you're happy with them online, then we'll pull it, okay? 82 is one of those where Ned had the action on him because he, everybody liked his yes. articulation, and he was going to open the new pro request. Um, then I don't know how much of this of 82 would be replaced by that one, so. Talk about that next time. Oh, I don't think it overlapped with 86. I think. Yeah, I see. I'm looking at 82 where it says, you know, I like Ned's articulation. Maybe the PR should just say what's in Ned's principle. And Gary said, you know, Ned, will you take the lead on the PR revision? So I think he owns the token on 82 now. I agree with you. Ned? Ned? Yeah, I uh, just uh, haven't had time to work yeah. on it. So we re it, that was Gary's pull request that, that we reopened so we could edit it. Yeah. It's not like okay. we're waiting for you. We have plenty of other things to talk about, apparently. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Talk to you guys next week. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.